This is the Johnsville N3 NAS case, which supports a mini ATX motherboard as well as eight hot swappable hard drives. I recently did a review of the N2, uh, which is a five bay version of this. This is a newer offering by Johnsville, so I thought I would give an overview of the case itself as well as build it up as a uh, NAS device and kind of give feedback on that. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look around the case itself, and uh, we'll compare that with the uh, Johnsville N2, which is right here. Move this over a little bit. So you can see the styling is very similar, and uh, size-wise, uh, it's definitely uh, the N3 is definitely taller. It's also a bit deeper as well, not by a whole lot. Just for a size reference, this is an eight-bay Synology NAS unit. This is the eight-bay Johnsville N3. You can see from the top here, this is definitely wider, but a much shorter. And lastly, here's your Synology 4-bay unit. But let's go ahead and take a look at the outside of the case. It's an all-metal construction. It's like a matte black uh, paint on it. looks nice. And uh, it's got this removable front panel, just like on the N2. And uh, except this time, obviously, you've got the uh, 8 bays as opposed to the 5. And uh, it does look like, let me get the light down here. So there's your back plane, which houses the eight hard drives, and it looks like it could accommodate an SAS drive as well. The uh, N2 also accommodates uh, SAS drives and actually recognized and worked with them as well. So that's, I'll verify that uh, later when I install the drives. And you can see here nicely labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across the top. And then uh, you've got your USB uh, three port here, a audio jack and a USB C port here and then the power button and then status lights for all eight hard drives. Now if you compare that to the N2, uh, it had no status lights on here it just but it does have a uh, very similar aesthetic though as far as the USB ports, audio jack and the power button. So if we continue to look around the case a little bit more uh, you can obviously see this front panel here just a lot of ventilation. Over on the one side you've got the uh, grill so if we take a closer look at the back here, you can see we've got the uh, two fans that come with the case. They're 100 millimeter fans and 25 millimeter thick. We'll take a look at those in a second. And then you actually have provisions at the top. There's no fans included here, but you could fit two 80 millimeter fans side by side there if you wanted to. You've got a full height PCIe slot as well, double width. And then obviously that's your uh, opening for your back plate for your motherboard. And then over on the other side, really nothing to look at there. And then on the bottom, you've got your uh, feet, which are like a soft foam. Now to get access to the case, um, it has some hex uh, screws on the side here, which is the same thing that it had on the N2 as well. The thing is the N2 actually came with a, uh, a hex key um, tool so that you can open the uh, top of the case without having to dig for your tool, which is nice to have. It does look like they have that provision here. However, they do provide the, uh, in their kit here, and we'll go over those in a second, a tool in there as well. So, so looking at the accessories box, you've got a number of screws here for, uh, they look like uh, fan screws, so probably to accommodate the two uh, fans in the back there. Zip ties, the two of the uh, hex tools, and then a, uh, screws for SSDs. There is provision for a single SSD in there as well as the eight hard drives and then uh, the mounting screws and washers for your motherboard. And additionally, uh, we'll take a look at these in a little bit, but these are the uh, mounting provisions for the hard drives to slide into the front here. And so they don't use like a traditional type of tray or something that you might find on a QNAP or Synology type NAS unit. So basically you just screw these on the front and you can pull it in and out and we'll go over that when we get to that point. So to remove this top panel we'll go ahead and get out the key. And this just pulls right out. Now it looks like this is reversible. Um, you can put it on either direction. Yeah, no problem there. 
and go ahead and take a peek inside this guy. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is as far as the power supply is concerned, it's got this uh, power plug here already and it routes to this uh, cable here. So you install your SFX. That's the thing is this also uh, requires an SFX PSU so you can't use a common uh, ATX PSU. Um, not a huge deal but just if you're looking to uh, build with uh, existing components you're going to have to look make sure you get a SFX PSU instead of a standard ATX. And it, this now I'm not a big fan of having a attachment like this, this personal preference here, only because I have something similar in a Fractal Design Node 304. And uh, while I like the case a lot, the Node 304, uh, the one thing I don't like is that you have no access to the power switch on the power supply itself. You actually have to unplug it from the back to actually power off the computer if you want to um, just pull power from it completely. And then you obviously have your provisions for USB 3, your audio, this is oh, HD audio front panel and then a USB 3 connector that's the USB C connector I should say and then what is this oh it looks like this is the cable that runs over to the back plane for the status lights it looks like in the front now, I'm curious about a couple of design decisions on this thing because they offer a full height PCIe slot and I'm not sure if it really justifies the added height of this NAS case because most people will probably if you're using it as a NAS, you're going to use the eight bays. You're probably just going to need like an HBA add-in card, for SAS slash SATA HBA add-in card, which are usually half height anyways. And uh, whether you need the extra cooling or not, um, chances are you probably are okay because you're not going to be running a high-end CPU in here anyhow. So neither here nor there. I just think it's an interesting uh, design, design decision here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the back. And you have these two fans that come with the case. And they're actually branded as John's Bow fans. Now you can see here that these are 100 millimeter fans and they are 25 millimeters thick. Now I do have a 80 millimeter fan here just to show you. Um, it's 80 millimeters roughly and uh, 25 millimeters thick and it mounts fine in this provision or out opening right here. You can see the and tools there line up. So 80 millimeter fans fit there. Now we can go ahead and take a closer look at the back plane and you can see it's powered by two four pin Molex connectors and a single SATA power connector. It does have two fan headers, they're four pin fan, he fan headers in the back. Just thought I'd mention that it does accommodate a two and a half inch SSD as well so you can just mount it uh, on the inside here. It looks like you just use the top two screw holes like that just have it hang there. And it looks like you can also do that on the other side as well as these uh, this lines up there as well as back here. So either position is fine. Obviously that depends on the thickness of the PCIe card that if you manage to put one in there. This front panel actually comes off too. I don't think there's any really reason to remove it, but I'll do it anyways. A couple of screws. So when you remove that front panel, this is what you get. Basically it's a... Uh, that's the panel and then some form of metal filter there. So I guess you could remove it to clean that out if it ever gets dusty or whatever. It's also made of metal. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and build this thing up. I've got my uh, ITX motherboard. It's uh, an older model, but uh, it'll work just fine. And uh, I also have the SFX PSU. Now obviously because you're running eight hard drives in here, you're likely going to need a... Uh, PCIe card anyways to uh, run all eight hard drives unless you actually get like a server motherboard which actually has uh, eight set of ports on it and uh, this one has six but uh, I'm going to actually add in a, uh, a SAS PCIe HBA card in here as well. Okay, first obstacle, the uh, motherboard went in just fine, but mounting the power supply requires you to, look, looks like, to remove this bracket here, mount it to the power supply, and then mount this bracket back in the case with the power supply on it. 
because you can't get a screwdriver in to screw those uh, screws, the bracket to the power supply. You also need an extra long screwdriver here unless you can get in at an angle. There's no way you're doing that with a Linus Tech Tip screwdriver. <laughs> All right, bracket is on. Thing you have to think about is how you want to orient your power supply as well. The uh, fan is here, so I want it going out the front panel here because there's ventilation there. I don't necessarily want any hot air, although this shouldn't get that hot, pushing it into here. But I don't know, I guess it's whatever your personal preference is. Now, in case you're wondering, um, if you you probably need at least a 140 millimeter long shaft on your screwdriver to get it down there, so you can actually access the screws. Okay, now this is a quality of life improvement here. I don't know why more motherboards or more cases don't do this, but it's actually a single connector to hook up all your uh, status lights, your power switch, your power reset, etc. I don't know why this hasn't been done in the past. Poof, just like that. Okay, so I managed to get the motherboard installed and the power supply, and they do have a few tie downs here so you can manage your cables and a little area to tuck your uh, cables into if you need to here. And then down below, they have uh, this little rail here has some holes in it that you can use to uh, tie down your cables too to help uh, organize them. Obviously, I don't have the data cables in here yet, but what I want to do is fire this up without these fans. Uh, connected and then also fired up with the fans connected to kind of get an idea for the uh, sound difference there and see how good or bad it is. Now as far as mounting the hard drives is concerned, see it has this little rubber band that you put on the uh, back of these here. And I wouldn't screw these down more than hand tight, otherwise it'll squish that down. It won't be able to ride in that rail inside of there. But otherwise, it's a pretty smooth operation to install and remove. You just have to support the case a little bit when inserting it, because against that SATA port there, it, uh, it's a little snug fit. Now I do have a number of screws left. Uh, I only put four screws per hard drive, and if you wanted to put six, it looks like you have enough uh, screws to do that if you'd like to and there is an extra strap here as well. Now that I have the hard drives installed, I'm installing this uh, LSI 9211-8i uh, SAS SATA adapter, and through these two ports here, I can get four SATA out the end here, so with two of these, I can support the eight discs that are in the case. All right, so I have uh, SATA connectors connected, and I'm not gonna really tidy this up too much because I may be taking this in and out, but it uh, looks like there's ample clearance to put these guys in here. These are the two rear-mounted fans on the Johnsville N3 case, and they are used to cool the hard drives, which uh, mounts to the back right here. You can see through the back plane and over passes over the hard drives in there. And these are 100 millimeter by 25 millimeter fans, and they are three pin, which means it's a DC control. There is no PWM control for these. And uh, you can also see that as John's Bell branding, I didn't find any other branding on here, so I don't know if uh, these are just some off the shelf fans that they just put their own branding on or not. Now, the rear back plane here does come with two fan uh, pin headers 
see one on the left there, and then one over on the right. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug these into there, which will run at full speed, which uh, runs at the full 12 volt of the fans. Then I'm also going to test it by plugging it into the header on the uh, motherboard. And then I'm going to go into the BIOS and set it to what's called standard mode, which will run the fans at a reduced s speed or RPM, and that's at about 8.8 .8 volts. Now I'm going to be running three different scenarios of disks in this case. And first is the uh, eight of these two terabyte 7200 RPM Seagate hard drives and uh, run in a RAID 6. And then I'm going to run four by four terabyte HGST SAS drives. You can see the SAS connector there. Run in a RAID 5. And I'm going to separate those every other drive bay. And then that's going to be run in RAID 5. And then lastly, a combination of 12 terabyte and 14 terabyte Western Digital Discs. Um, I think I have five of the 12 terabyte and three of the 14 terabyte. I'm going to combine those into a single RAID 6 array, so a total of eight of these higher capacity disks. And each of these are going to be run in the two different scenarios, both at 12 volt fan speed as well as 8 volt band speed and checking the uh, cooling performance of the case and the fans. So I currently have the eight 2 terabyte Seagate drives in here. And here's the cooling performance while it's going through a RAID 6 build. You can see they're all about uh, 30 degrees C. Uh, one's a little, like 34, but pretty cool. And uh, that's with the fans at max. And uh, here you can see that it's uh, in the sync phase of that RAID array. All right, so I'm building an array using the four SAS disks right now. And uh, you can see here, it's been going for quite a while, 67% complete. And if we go ahead and take a look at the smart attributes for the temperature. You can see here they are running around 37, 38 degrees Celsius. Now here's the uh, Johnswell N3 with the 5, 12 terabyte and 3, 14 terabyte and a RAID 6 array. And take a look over here, you can see that uh, it's syncing. It's been going for quite a while. And uh, in RAID 6 config, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the temperatures of these disks. Basically running at full speed, 100% utilization, and we're looking at uh, 40C or less. Here are the cooling test results of those fans and how well it cools the different configurations of hard drives. And uh, looking at the chart here, you can see on the horizontal axis, we have the total time of minutes of the test. And on the vertical axis, represents the degrees Celsius of the hard drives. And we have two sets of data here, the blue and the red. The blue represents the lower fan speed, which is plugged into the header on the motherboard and set to the standard fan speed setting. And then red represents the uh, maximum fan speed setting plugged into the rear fan headers on the uh, back plane of the case itself. So obviously that's going to be a faster RPM, which should result in lower temperatures, which we're seeing here. You know, each of these uh, lines represents a different separate hard drive. So we should have eight total lines here in each case. So uh, the higher fan speed setting you can see here uh, during idle, a total of three hours. It uh, never, no single disc exceeded about 32 Celsius. And then even running at the lower fan speed, uh, no single disc exceeded 35 Celsius. So now for higher utilization, uh, I did run a RAID 6 build. So basically the discs are running at close to 100% utilization throughout. You can see here, this is a six hour test, 360 minutes, and uh, it's the eight two terabyte hard drives. And you can see here running the higher fan speed setting, uh, no single disc exceeded about 34 Celsius. And then the low fan speed setting kept uh, the discs uh, below about 37, 38 degrees Celsius. Now here is the idle uh, results for the uh, higher capacity discs. And in this case, it's the idle test. So basically just sitting there doing nothing. Um, and that's for the 5, 12 terabyte plus 3, 14 terabyte running those in a RAID 6. That doesn't matter so much for this test, but uh, the higher fan speed, basically at idle, kept the discs uh, below 40 Celsius for the most part. And then even if you lowered that fan speed down to the 8 volt, um, it was able to run at uh, 44 Celsius maximum. Now under 100% utilization, we can see here that uh, the regular or high fan speed connected to that back plane um, resulted in temperatures pretty much remaining under 40 degrees Celsius throughout. And then if you wanted to bump that fan speed down by hooking up to your motherboard header or whatever, it kept the discs below 46 Celsius, even under a full load. Now I did plug in eight uh, Samsung 850 EVO SSDs in here. I just wanted to mention that 
there are no brackets or anything to plug it in. So you basically just have to plug it in there, but uh, there's nothing really, they're not very heavy and there's nothing that really needs to support it. But the main reason why I did that was to check the uh, back plane just to make sure there was no funny business going on with the uh, speeds of those discs. So effectively I ran an HD PARM test, uh, basically just a uncached uh, read performance test on each of those discs connected to each of those slots. And these are the results that came through. They're all about 500 megabytes per second. So that back plane is performing perfectly fine. And then just for funsies, here's the RAID 6 of all those SSDs uh, connected together. And uh, that hit up about 1850 megabytes per second there. I took some sound level measurements, the decibel level reading of the uh, case fans. And you can see here we've got the ambient noise in the room which is about 40 and a half decibels. And uh, I have other equipment in the room which uh, have fans running and stuff. So that's what uh, that equates to. So I did run it with uh, basically the low fan setting with no hard drives running, then low fan setting with two terabyte hard drives, and then also with the 12 terabyte hard drives running. You can see here that uh, compared to the no hard drives, 42.6, and then the high capacity disks went up to about 47.9 decibels. And then as far as high fan setting uh, with no hard drives running, it was at 45 decibels. And then the uh, high fan setting with the uh, high capacity disks was 48.3 decibels. Obviously, those noise levels will vary depending on the hard drives you're using. But just to give you an idea for what those uh, sound levels are like. And uh, honestly, it really is not any more noticeable than any other computer in the room. So I think they did a pretty decent job with that. Now I'm going to show you a few examples out of here, just so maybe you can get an idea for the sound of the fan, if you're interested, uh, following this section. So here's my final thoughts on the uh, Johnsbo N3 case. Obviously, it's an all-metal construction. It's got the eight hot swap bays. It's a mini ITX form factor, and it utilizes an SFX power supply. And uh, I think overall, it's a good fit and finish. It's a solid build with no noticeable buzzes or rattles while it's in use. And it's easy to build in, uh, in general, except for the uh, PSU bracket, which requires a long Phillips head shaft screwdriver to remove. And you have to remove that bracket in order to attach it to the uh, power supply. There's also ample clearance for a large CPU cooler and a full height uh, dual width PCIe card. The uh, included uh, two 100 millimeter fans, they provide adequate cooling for the hard drives at reasonable sound levels. And it keeps the larger capacity disks uh, cool under load uh, under 40 Celsius. And uh, the disks themselves are super easy to access and they fit snugly in the slots. And they don't create any noticeable uh, excess vibrations or, or noise that I could tell. And uh, this is kind of a minor thing, but I think it's a nice uh, quality of life addition is the, the front panel pins, like for your hard drive light, uh, indicator lights and your power switch and everything, uh, that all comes in a single connector, not like six or eight individual little pins that are trying to connect on that front panel header. Now, overall, I think they executed the uh, design as it is very well. I think my uh, biggest gripes would have to be with the overall design decisions on this case. And first of all, this one's kind of minor, but uh, the top cover uh, uses a hex tool to remove the, uh, the four screws. I think that could be a uh, Phillips screw, just because everybody tends to have Phillips screws or screwdrivers around and hex tools are something you got to dig for. Not a huge deal, but uh, just a little nitpick of mine. As far as the form factor is concerned, I don't think it needs to be quite as tall. Uh, I think uh, since you're going to be using this as a NAS device, that's really what the case is designed for, you probably really aren't going to have any massive heat sink or a super wide or tall um, PCIe card in there. So you could probably uh, knock a couple inches off the height of this thing and still be perfectly fine. Now that gets to the form factor of the motherboard. Uh, it does only support a mini ITX and that limits it to a single PCIe slot. 
and most mini ITX boards don't have more than four SATA ports, so a PCIe card is pretty much required if you want to run all eight discs in this case. And so that kind of restricts you. You can't uh, install like a faster network card, like a 10G network card, or something else even if you wanted to, um, just because you only have the single PCIe slot to, to work with. Now it's good to see that they did put the USB-A and USB-C connector on the front of the case, but again, because this is Mini-ITX, there's very few uh, Mini-ITX motherboards that uh, carry both a USB-3 20-pin header as well as that uh, USB-C uh, connector, and so you kind of have to choose between one or the, one or the other uh, which you're going to connect to your uh, motherboard, and so you kind of lose access to one or the other unless you go through some crazy adapters of some, some kind. I'd rather just see two USB Type-A ports than one A and one C, just because of that reason I explained. And as mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of the internal power plug. Uh, there's no way to manually switch off the power without pulling the plug or removing the cover to get access to the switch for the power supply. And that's about it for my uh, overall uh, impressions of this case. I think generally it's good. I think they could uh, improve on it from a couple design perspectives, but uh, if, as it is, I think it's a pretty solid case. So that's it for now. I hope you found this fun, interesting, entertaining, whatever. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later.